Okay, so uh, I will ask them to introduce themselves because uh, in the first I think that uh, you can consider what you think is important uh, to the researchers to hear. So if you want to start, uh, Caterina. <coughs> Thank you very much to be here. Uh, I am a founder and CEO of um, Think Tank for New Business Models. We start with the idea to be a workshop for new businesses and nowadays we are working bas basically in the smart city markets, basically with public administration, local public administration, trying to deserve this market, to open this market, because in the moment there is no market, through uh, transforming the, all the tendering process, including in this tendering process in the business models. Nowadays, uh, as commonly it's known, the tendering process is a buying process. The public administration by product. But buying process in the smart city technology, it's really not uh, bringing the value that these technologies and infrastructure is bringing to the society. And we believe that through uh, creating employment and economical growth for the location through new business models, can uh, really bring this value that the uh, digital technologies nowadays transforming the municipalities in our society can bring. So this is our, uh, our main goal as an uh, enterprise nowadays. And so we start with the main motivation to bring this uh, techno knowledge transfer from university, from research groups to society. And uh, this market, it's new. It's not open, still not open. There is huge opportunity there. It's huge market, as we see here. Uh, investors are looking for huge markets. And normally, uh, some people think that it's uh, too risky to start somewhere that it's not open. I really invite you to think in your research for these markets that are close, that are difficult because of uh, legal issues, because w of, of cultural issues, because as research and university, we need to bring education <coughs> to society. I think this is our mission, and this should be our effort of our spin-offs and our startups. And so I hope that uh, as a research um, community in, in the society, we have this mission also, not only educating employers for the, for the enterprises, but also educating the society. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Katarina. Pablo. Yeah. Hello, good afternoon. Can you listen? Can you hear? Yeah? yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm Paolo Cironi. I'm the, the head of the Technology and Business Development Office at uh, CRG. Uh, no long time ago, I was uh, sitting in a, you know, like you in the audience that was in the US, and uh, I was uh, listening to uh, similar roundtables. Uh, and it was very interesting because, I mean, you can have a vision also of what technology transfer is and entrepreneurship from uh, from other scientists, right? So that means I was a scientist, I'm a chemist by training, and uh, but did my postdoc in uh, in synthetic biology. So I changed also radically my career path. A um, few, few years later, I, I landed in uh, in the Botin Foundation, and uh, during that time, I had the pleasure to, to be here. I met uh, Laura Lechuga, I was collaborating with her in all the process on technology transfer. And uh, that was, uh, I don't remember, maybe four or five years ago when the last time I was here at the, uh, this institute. Um, so I'm happy to be back. And uh, three years and a half ago, I, I moved back to, I moved to Barcelona. So I'm now at the Center for Genomic Regulation. It's an institute that probably m many of you uh, know. It's, uh, it's a basic scientist institute. Uh, and uh, I, I, I quote that because it's, it's very important for the discussion as well. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely, it's, it's a great institute to work. Uh, and uh, what we do in technology transfer is no different what anybody does in other places. So basically, what basically uh, we we do a lot of uh, meetings with scientists. We try to understand what the science uh, you perform, trying to uh, understand uh, w whether there is any uh, inventions or any kind of uh, ideas that could be transferred to the society. So and then we help on the align all the process. From the idea to the to the market, the market is not just to sell a product; it's mostly to find the right partner that will take that idea into the market. But along that, there is a lot of discussion with different stakeholders, right? There will be the scientists, you will deal with the intellectual property, now IP lawyers. You do a lot of legal uh, management. Uh, you have to come to agreement and negotiate agreements with a lot of different also stakeholders with different interests. You deal also with uh, uh, people who has an entrepreneur mindset and people who has a very scientific mindset with investors, with companies and companies, people f 
from a business development perspective and also with scientists. Uh, so the idea is that in this role you uh, really have to integrate a lot of different people with different mindset and try to uh, create value on this process so you can really uh, bring value to society from these ideas that are coming from the institutes. Thank you, Okay, good afternoon to everybody. So my name is uh, Xavier Obrador and I am the director of Your Neighbors, uh, Institute of Material Science of Barcelona, uh, since the last 10 years. And I am, will tell that I'm here maybe with three heads at least. One is as a director of the uh, research center, the second one as a, a researcher, which is uh, coordinating European projects and trying to uh, bring uh, our uh, research results to the uh, industry and finally I'm also a founder of one of the spin-off companies of the IGMAP uh, which is Oxolutia, it was created six years ago and so I have uh, <coughs> also the point of view of uh, some people of the institute who has been transferred from research and uh, PhD activities and so on in the institute to the uh <coughs> uh, spin-off companies and how a spin-off company can survive here with uh, uh, the main uh, philosophy that uh, has been explained with uh, Monse, but with a more, let's say, local perspective and uh, mainly in the, I would say, in the European research area. Mm. And additionally, I am the PhD director of Katerina, so I am very happy <laughs> that uh, uh, it was a surprise <coughs> for me to see her uh, here. And so uh, it's also an important part of the institute uh, to generate a lot of uh, people who is really uh, getting the, the challenge of going to the companies. So I would say that about one third of the PhD people in the institute are now in companies. Uh, in technological centers or entrepreneurships and so on and so it's part of our uh, uh, mm, duties to really create this uh, spirit. So we are in this sense very close to your uh, situation, we you are in nanotechnology, we are in adv advanced functional materials, we are quite close in the kind of uh, industries and the kind of uh, problematics that, uh, that we have and so I will try to share with all of you the the initiatives that we have, uh, which is uh, maybe a little bit different than the uh, bio sector. Uh, the kind of industries that we are addressing is uh, sometimes the bio sector, but other times are more, let's say, less innovative or less uh, uh, more traditional companies uh, in the electrical sector or uh, let's say regulated sectors where sometimes you have other kinds of uh, problematics that you need to address as well. So that's it. Thank you. So I was I'm going to start with some questions, but if someone has any question, any doubt, please feel free. It's supposed <coughs> to be a discussion table, so um, take advantage of <laughs> this table today. Um, for me, the first question is: What does technology transfer or business development means to you? What what uh, from different perspectives? I would like to know what this term means, and. Um, if you consider that, for sure, you're thinking of some a successful case. So, uh, what um, what this success depend on? Start. Oh, please. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I I was trying to imagine what will be the perspective of my uh, people uh, which are in the table with me, and so I would. I uh, that I am the active researcher, so I think that I need to take the view of the researchers. And so mainly probably here we have a lot of uh, people who is uh, interested in these kind of things. And <coughs> I would say that the first point is, of course, to, to consider the idea of tech transfer so within the, the lab. Uh, to create the spirit that uh, what you are doing is really worth of uh, uh, being transfer is the first uh, goal, which is sometimes not, not easy. And so uh, to uh, insert the idea that uh, uh, in the case of the material science and nanotechnology, very often we are uh, dealing with problems which are, um, let's say, uh, with the vertical structure. So health it was a kind of a structure that it was uh, shown by Mose and I heard that uh, I had the impression that uh, in the functional materials we have something like similar. Usually the kind of materials and nanotechnology that we are doing, they have a value uh, as soon as uh, they are uh, demonstrated that uh, you can incorporate in a specific device, in a specific uh, application mm -hmm. and so on. And so of course this means that if you make the list of the 
people who is involved in the whole process is really mm -hmm. very long. So it's a long and winding road to really demonstrate that my material will be useful for uh, that specific. Thing. So this means that I need to cooperate with uh, an electrical engineering, uh, materials engineering guy, then uh, this is still within the academia, but then I need to uh, start to talk with uh, companies which are interested in manufacturing, uh, others which are interested in, uh, let's say, uh, include the manufacturing process in the, in the final uh, item. And finally, I, I, I need the user. For instance, if we are talking about energy, so Pedro is, uh, knows very well, energy sector of course you are the new of energy so it's actually the demand is comes from the people I mean it's uh, no way so the companies will never innovate unless you pressure the, the, the these companies to do so and so this means that you really need to have a, a view of the whole history uh, in order that uh, when you start your technology transfer or your ideas of technology transfer you should be aware when you start that Okay, so I would say that for a research group, it's clear that you need to have, let's say, first maturity. Okay, so if it is uh, still too early, it's probably not worth to do that. Uh, and then uh, to, to, to look for the, the right partners. Okay, so because uh, if you just manufacture, you think in your uh, small laboratory, uh, you will never succeed in getting interest from uh, markets and so on uh, to really estimate all these things. And so this whole process, I think, uh, is important to be considered in the laboratory. I would say that, uh, in my opinion and my own experience, uh, it has always been very <coughs> difficult for the small research groups in Catalonia to have the opportunity to be really proactive enough to, to get the right uh, position in the, at least the European uh, competitiveness, let's say, unless you have a minimum of critical mass, let's say, uh, in terms of maturity and size, okay? And for instance, the spin-off company that we created was actually uh, because we realized that we never had enough uh, critical mass, okay, in an institute like material science or your, so the size of the thing that you can do uh, and the type of, m of work that you can do is limited and the spin-off company could uh, go beyond that, so let's say in the language of the technology readiness level of the community, we could reach three, four, but uh, with a spin-off company, we could go a couple of uh, levels uh, additionally. And so this means that we could be together, the spin-off company and the laboratory. So I, I guess that this is a formula that uh, for the kind of institutes that we are, it's a good one. Uh, because the companies that we have around, they are, let's say, not extremely innovative, okay? They are not investing a lot, so you need to work in the European, at least in the European uh, size, and in the European size, you really need to go uh, with a critical mass uh, of people, and uh, let's say the spread of the activities that you can do in order to really get the, the right uh, people. So that's, that's more or less, I would say, something which is quite specific for materials and nanotechnology, which is quite a transverse activity. And, and you want to really to bring something in a specific demand on a specific market. And so you need to really have some, uh, some, uh, some role to, to, to demonstrate that your product is a, a good one. And then spin-off then, of course, starts to, to be at the stage and another type of investment, okay? But uh, there is a mutual benefit of the spin-off and the research group if you can really demonstrate together a certain spread of the <coughs> activities. So that's what I wanted to say. So just to add a few things more uh, to what uh, Xavier already said, uh, I could start from something that technology transfer is not, and it's not about money. Because some people, I mean, usually think that technology transfer is all about money. And it's not necessarily about money. Okay, technology transfer is, is let's say, it's a process. I mean, it's not, it's nothing else. But I mean, you're using uh, most of, in most of the cases, uh, public funding to do research to generate the benefit uh, for the society. So, technology transfer at the end is a process to, to help you to bring your ideas into a uh, solution for the society. In case of uh, life science, uh, of biotechnology, many times it's to uh, find uh, different uh, therapeutics for uh, an unmet medical need. It could be, a, a, let's say, a medical device. 
Uh, in other sectors, could be just to generate the device that could, uh, you know, make someone else's uh, life easier. Okay, but at the same time, in doing all this process, okay, that's the the process. You can make money. That's fine. It's 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 it's, it's okay. But uh, the main objective is bringing benefit solutions to people. Okay, and um, and along this, I mean, in on this process, I mean, many times, uh, you can also think about. Uh, creating jobs, for example, when you're starting new companies, and maybe probably not when you license things. So this is something that maybe we can discuss in, uh, during the during this hour, uh, because depending on what your shareholders want from you, you know, you, you define different strategies for your office or for your institute. Okay, and someone might think, well, no, really, we need to have income. So then you follow a, a different pathway, maybe. But th at the end of the day, uh, of the road, it's always the same case. You're trying to benefit someone. Uh, let me add just one thing to tech transfer, which is the K. Sometimes you can see in different offices or in different um, places, you know, the KTT, and uh, the K stands for knowledge. So you cannot just transfer. N not only you should be thinking about transferring uh, technologies, I mean, know-how and, and, and knowledge is also something that uh, you can consider as part of your business model, right? So, I mean, many, many different institutions are, like, for example, offering consultancy, and that's knowledge transfer, okay? Or training. You have a uh, huge expertise. You are in, in nanomaterials, for example, or in genomics, or another sector, and you're, uh, you know, you have a lot of key opinion leaders. You can offer training for 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 uh, companies and so on. They're very happy to to learn from the best, right? They are very specialized in a sector, and for them, it's it's something that are really really interesting to do it, and that's also part of this of this process, right? There's not much more. I, I, I fully agree with Pablo, what Pablo was saying. I think one of the main things about tech transfer is that has to be at the core of the mission of the institute. Obviously, an institute is a research organization, but this is not something like on the side, just in case. It has to be a mission of an institute that has, as you stated before, basic science as a mission to also generate solutions for and, and, and products for society and return to society, you know, in, in, in an ultimate case, uh, what was invested in them because uh, with the public money that's investing uh, to the research. But beyond this more conceptual thing, it has to be like at the DNA of the whole organization and this means like from the director to, to the mission of the institution to have this in mind because a lot of mistakes can happen if you don't have this present in every step you take and uh, you can completely you know <coughs> spoil a potential situation and a potential return for the organization or a potential solution for the market if you don't take care at uh, the due time of how to protect the ip for instance and we are seeing this because this has not and you and Pablo can can tell you more about it we've discussed this in the past how you know it's really relevant to build the right protection around what you're doing at the right time so that this eventually can then be subject to be invested or acquired by someone otherwise it's not going to be worth anything so I would say in the second part of your question is what the, it depends on it depends on a lot of things but mainly technology needs to be protected otherwise it's going to be very difficult to make this transfer this into a solution because no one will will invest in it. Okay, just to to put the, I, I am going to to answer a dis in this question from the point of view of outside of the research. I mean, I've been in the university since my 14. I, I spent more than 20 years in the university, and what I always uh, live as a personal experience was that I was living in uh, elite community. Th so elitistic that nobody understand me o outside in the street. Mm -hmm. So I believe uh, the f transfer, uh, transfer of technology is coming from the citizen education. We need to educate the people around us. We need to explain the usage of our research. What we are doing in a small scale as a basic research, whatever it is, we need to communicate outside. Without this communication, uh, the process to go to the market will be really, really uncomfortable because Going to the market, it's marketing. O every, a, a, any company, any business uh, has a huge department of marketing that is n nothing more than citizen education. It's plain to the citizen why they are work to be there, why they, they have a mission to be there, and what is their, uh, their value. 
And this, I think, it's something that our system as a, as a science in general has working for many years. And it's something that we needed to start to, to transform. From this, we all uh, easily understand everything about business, about this uh, term that they have uh, a product market, market fit. <coughs> Uh, as I understand nowadays, the, the research, uh, it's the department of product development. If we are product development, we need to have the market, you know. So this communication to try to explain to our familiars, to our friends that are not involved in our science, it's our exercise in personal level to, to get this product market fit. If my science, if my research and experience in the lab are worth for the society, they will give us the feedback and it's really cheap. So I hope this uh, business point of view can help the, our research society to understand how the businesses think. When you have investor in front and speak about money, it's really difficult for us from the university to understand why he wants to multiply by thousand. I, if you look the credits on banks, you have five percent of interest, and the VC capital it's a thousand percent. It's really really expensive money. I mean, we see this presentation, but we need to really to analyze the cost of the money when we are going to look for the source of money to, to invest in our projects. And to be sure that we want to give back this return by thousand, it's uh, really important to understand that our value is really so huge that everybody will pay for this value. And this coming from the, from the education. So um, maybe it's a failure not to have uh, this room full of people today. <laughs> it's quite full. <laughs> well, but <laughs> was burning in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's. I mean, this is a social problem. Are we facing um, something that the society can can understand what we are doing? Let me ask you first. I mean, how many uh, PIs are missing here? <laughs> that's really another question. <laughs> <laughs> but that would be the with the worst answer, I am afraid. <laughs> PIs. Raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> we we not have around. one, two, three, four, five, six, economic on six, seven, seven, eight. seven, eight. Eight. <laughs> seven, eight. Yeah. I have a spin off. So <laughs> eight. eight from 17. Not even yeah. 50 percent. Yeah. Uh, I want uh, another question. How many here are uh, students still? They are not PhD students, but students. I mean, master or early, early, early courses. Uh, two, three, yeah. two. But the aim well, of I, the, I the would the raise my hand because I consider myself a permanent uh, learner. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, I mean, if you look on the on the um, United States model for uh, spin-offs, what they have in their campuses is that the spin-offs uh, normally are raised by students that are in their uh, uh, third to to fourth year in the education. Then they get their masters, if it's uh, business or other, uh, or their PhD. And uh, it's really not common there to to researchers to make spin-offs. This is why I believe in our system we need to involve more the, the students as a um, professional, professional path for them, this uh, tra technological transfer. And I was asking the question because it's typical on, uh, on events about uh, innovation that we are working the, the YAF <coughs> to be there. We have this problem with YAF employment, but later they are not in the event. <laughs> If I may insight on, on the on this on this issue, um, I think that what it was mentioned about the mindset, um, I think that is very important, and I want to correlate this with the question of Nadia because uh, <coughs> it's true that uh, it is the mindset of uh, of the researchers, of the innovators, it is the mindset of the industry around, of the ecosystem, and for instance, I, I feel that we have the wrong mindset all of uh, all over, and also in the case that. And we initiated, for instance, uh, what uh, Nadia was saying. So this morning the session was full, no, because there was science. But well, in the afternoon there is not so much about science, so the session is not that full. Uh, but also when you talk about the the mindset of the local industry, um, it's difficult. I mean, this mm -hmm. is definitely not Cambridge. This is not Silicon Valley, and it's not so easy to translate that uh, success into. Uh, into this region or any other place. I mean, the Silicon Valley model has been tried in many other yeah. places. It doesn't work. So, 
Uh, should we just focus on what we have around uh, instead of trying to implement like a more like a global approach, mm -hmm. like for instance, mm -hmm. months that you were showing, mm -hmm. you know, should we focus more on our local industries? So it's a, it's a, I think that it's a global problem. I see that they are, we have difficulties in, 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 in bringing the right mindset from uh, all the actors, no stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what's your no, solution no. for that. You know, I don't know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I haven't found a solution. I've been working a lot, as <laughs> Pablo says, in, and that's why we were trying to do a little bit in, in, in BioCAD, right? But that's, that's certainly an issue, and that's what Israel also, you know, has all these ingredients, or a lot of them. Uh, here, one of the problems you mentioned is, uh, and we have it also in life sciences, uh, even if we have a strong pharma sector, They've never been really a motor at the level of subcontracting or at the level of mobility or at the level of research collaborations uh, or even investing in new spin-offs um, for our local community. So if you, if you want to check <coughs> local, you're not really going to go far. But th th on the other hand, normally all these companies start moving locally. Right, and then you, you get a contract with someone that's next to you. You have some mentors from some organizations that help you make the right decisions in the very beginning. So we need to become really global because to change our immediate environment, it's not that I'm pessimistic, but it is kind of tough. So um, you need quite a lot of ingredients. We, one of them is investment, and this has been getting better. Uh, there's more specialized venture capital firms or investors at early stage, although public money has diminished when it was there was more seed money a few years ago. But then, obviously, you need accelerators, you need mentors, you need all these elements. And I think that the fact that it's not really the culture from the very beginning and how we change this. We always say we need success stories, we need all these things, but to get it, it's like a catch-22 thing, right? To get a success story, you need someone who makes it. And, and here, I think we are much better than what we, how we were 15 years ago, right? You can discuss these things. Uh, organizations are starting to really get sound organ in units inside of them to, to, to start taking care of these things that in the past they did not exist. You really need to devote part of your budget there because you need to recruit the right people. You need to really fund, to have programs to fund the first proof of concept of projects. So there's, there's a lot of ingredients and we are just escaping a very hard crisis, which normally uh, has an impact on these kind of things. But I'm sure you, Pablo, I agree with you. I mean, it's it's very good question actually. It's mm -hmm. uh, but there is no an easy answer for that. No. Uh, I mean, it's and who I think it's it's maybe it's, it's n trying to solve the problem is n probably not the right approach. Maybe what we can all do is just to do what we have to do the best we can. Yeah. Uh, be as professional as we can. This is a matter of uh, you know people. Uh, uh, so I mean, it's, it's to recruit the bright the, the best people. I think it at least here locally uh, there were some good programs. Uh, that managed to recruit good people, keep them here. Uh, also changed a lot in terms of, you know, the research institute became very strong, uh, much stronger and uh, well recognized internationally. So nowadays, I mean, we have, you know, we are being contacted by the big farmers all the time. So they know the names of the scientists, they know the quality of the science. So that's a very good start. But that's not all. I mean, you need uh, also, as uh, Monsieur was uh, saying, I mean, uh, very important um, uh, mission in terms of technology transfer in the institutes. I mean, and the local government as well. I mean, not just a uh, you know, just a flower pot saying ah, that we do innovation, but at the end, I mean, nobody wants to invest in innovation. There's no money. There's no funding. They they're not the right people to do that job, and that's a very a very important part of it. Then it's the entrepreneurship uh, uh, part, where I mean, if you don't if you don't have startups, if you don't have if you don't didn't go all the whole cycles, then you don't have seasoned entrepreneurs. And, but that doesn't mean that uh, it cannot be done. It's just a matter of time. Uh, people, may, maybe it uh, wants to rush this uh, and have results in two, three years because we already invest 15 e years in, in, in good science. And uh, that's not going to happen. It might take more f 15 years more, actually, to go to the, all this cycle. But I think it's by incentivizing and uh, bringing or developing new programs um, from uh, let's say policymakers and, and and from the European government and so on, that that definitely will help. Definitely. Um, if I can add uh, here a little bit, 
First, uh, I mean, we need to have more events of this and we need to form us as a research community about this uh, technological transfer because uh, on the global scale, the things are moving really fast and the, the landscape of funding is changing. I was in Brussels a few weeks ago and they just announced that the next program after Horizon 2020 will be totally based on technological transfer. I mean, there will be no any funds like, like, um, like a public funds as we have been <coughs> traditionally used to them. So we need to, to create these groups for uh, trans technological transfer from the point of view to as, a, as enterprises. I mean, we, we need to complement us with this uh, market department, if I can say. That uh, as a first uh, step, uh, this, this department should do, how to say, inventory of all our work to the moment. Because I'm sure each institute nowadays in Catalonia has results that can be marketed in this moment as a products or services, whatever. And this should be the first step. What we have done to the moment, how we can sell this. And it's not should be only like uh, patents or like licenses. We, we can think about our business models that can finance the institute properly. Uh, I found really difficult from the business point of view to buy a patent or license because it's really expensive. And uh, the risk is too high because in the end I need to develop the market for this. And nobody is demonstrating me that it's really useful for the society. So there is a really a huge barrier from the business point of view to buy a patent. Nobody is looking over this because later there is a lot of ways to, to hit on the patent. I mean, we say our technology is uh, it's, uh, secure. It's not true. I mean, it's really easy to be copied and because of business model and some other innovation. So nowadays in business, uh, of course, uh, for investor point of view, it's interesting to have a patent, but from the business point of view, it's not necessary. The necessary is to get the market. Who has the market? Who is number one in the market? It's really who has the money. So the big uh, fight from the business point of view, it's not who has the patent and who really make the money. So if we complement our education and our departments with one of few people that has this uh, mindset, it will be more easy to, to us to transform. And uh, it's culture. And we need to accept our culture. It's not uh, good or worse than the United States. It's different. <coughs> and the, there is really good, uh, successful stories from Catalan's enterprise nowadays. Catalonia, it's, uh, as an as a economy, it's growing really fast, the fastest in Europe. So we are not bad. Uh, we just, uh, to recognize us, our f uh, strong, strong points, and uh, go, go optimistic and uh, ambitious. I would like to raise a point that uh, a point related to everything that has been uh, said, uh, including uh, the set of mind, which I would call sets of minds. No? No. Sets of minds in plural, and it has also to do with the fact that. Um, well, uh, Pablo's comment on, on uh, technology transfer is not about uh, money. Well, the way I would put it is uh, this has to do with uh, two worlds getting together and gearing up together, the world of knowledge and the world of profit. And uh, for the world of knowledge, it's not about money because eventually we might get some money, but not that big deal. For the other half, for people coming from the investing world, it's all about money. It's all about profit. And it's uh, quite difficult to gear these two worlds in a sufficiently effective and fair way. Okay, here comes my comment. Uh, Katarina has asked me before about Grafe Nano. Um, sometimes the, the people from the knowledge part, uh, with the best intention, uh, put forward a product that is heated up by the uh, financial people, by the investors, and uh, it has to do with uh, raising the value of the company that Monse was uh, mentioning before. You see all those players come together and uh, eventually something, some smoke <coughs> comes out of a uh, very small fire. Uh, mm, what do you have to tell us to protect 
people from the knowledge uh, world into uh, this kind of, uh, let's say, uh, futures market people thinking about increasing the value of the corporation uh, without uh, solid background. That's my point. Uh, okay. 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 Since, you, since you mentioned that uh, I was saying something, uh, so just to be specific, uh, you know, technology transfer is not about, it should not be perceived as about money. Obviously there is money in place, otherwise it will not be around. Um, so how we do protect uh, the scientists or let's say the, 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 the technology from a research institute on, on, on a case that you're mentioning. I mean, I'm not, this in, I'm not sure if it is an hypothetical case or something that happened. Uh, I suppose it did happen, but it, it would be, it's better to speak so generally. Let's so see, those are the mechanisms. So when it comes to uh, the assets from a research institute, I mean, we're very, you know, we, we, we're very careful how we actually deal with this uh, technology transfer process. So, for instance, we don't license technology uh, just for the sake of getting an uh, economic return. So we ask for progress. So we don't uh, license a patent for have someone having uh, it in their desk for a while sitting because that will increase, uh, let's say, the, 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 the value of the companies. That's not what we're here for. If you want to have a technology for a, from a, a public funding institute, you have to develop that, okay? So now, whether they, they do something to increase the value of the company uh, line, well, that's really bad business. So I, I mean, I'm gonna just, I mean, I think it, uh, at the end of the day, I mean, uh, people do the due diligence uh, very strongly and uh, I would, uh, you know, it would be difficult to believe that someone really are going to uh, uh, put money on something that has no value. Now, m sometimes what you see is there are very disruptive companies uh, where still we don't understand with the business model and these people are very creative and um, they are really transforming the, the business ecosystem and we sometimes we believe this let's say this the value is not correct one right I mean some people could say why why Facebook or why you know LinkedIn or why all these IT companies or software companies has those value where are they producing it yeah yeah where are, where are they producing right well I mean these are disrupting I mean or Airbnb someone was mentioned you were mentioning so I mean, there are things that are new right I mean this is not a classical model I mean, we don't do that kind of technology, right? And uh, most of these, they're not coming from, at least from the tech transfer office. Many times, as she mentioned, we're yeah, coming from undergraduates exactly, yeah. with good ideas oh. and, and investors see an opportunity and so on. When it comes to a technology, really, I mean, solid technology, I mean, from a due diligence point of view, I mean, I don't think you can sell smoke. Honestly, no. uh, it was very difficult. Yes. I fully, I fully agree. And when she was referring to markets, you know, the one that has the market is the winner. Obviously, in this kind of companies that you mentioned, where patents are not relevant, but then we, you're not really talking about what we're talking here, right? And w in technology, and I'm, l I've been a little bit confused by what you were asking because it would be no interest of any investor to really make fuss about something that they are going planning on buying because it could become more expensive and then you would have this valuation <coughs> problem that I was, and you will overpay for something. So in that sense, it, 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 it would not work, right? So um, it's very difficult to really sell, as he was saying, because you really want to make sure you're investing in money that's not yours. And, and, and you really want to make sure that you're buying something that's solid and you, you check every of the angles. Let me say, defend a little bit, I told you before that VCs are not popular, right? But, uh, and you said, it's only about money. Well, basically, uh, you know, the way I feel now, maybe I'm a newcomer, but I've been trying to help entrepreneurs when I was at Biocat putting together entrepreneur support programs, and um, now I feel I can do the same and I have the money. So I feel privileged, you know, what I, before I was trying to do and helping them, you know, talk to this one, putting them in touch with this investor. Now, if I see a good project, uh, I can, well, convince my team and, and we can invest in this project. And obviously you want some returns because you need to return the money, but you are going to live and die by this company because maybe you are going to be sitting in what, four to five boards of companies. So that's gonna be your job during the next 10 years. And you're gonna be sitting with entrepreneur, deciding who they hire, which market they go, what kind of strategy they do for trials, etc. So 
it's really going to be your baby too, right? And you want to this, uh, <coughs> and and this might might look, you know. But I, when I was talking to my colleague, he is invested in one of the companies that has completely revolutionized the immune oncology, right? Uh, Kite, no, w which has completely changed the way you're treating uh, specific cancers, uh, particularly leukemia. He was telling, you know, I see the X-ray or the NMR of someone before and after, and I see this person is clean, and I go to bed happy every day, right? That because I know something I invested has had an impact. So that's, it has to do a lot about that too, especially if you're dealing with health, right? So, or rare diseases, where maybe, you know, your, your role, you can have, just because you decided to invest in that entrepreneur and it works, uh, obviously you make money, that doesn't hurt, but um, you also get solutions to the people, which is what, we are all in the turn. Um, no, no. Maybe I can get here from the entrepreneur point of view. I mean, uh, we are used to about events to speak about the success uh, success stories. Always the the not successful stories are going to this ninety percent of startups that die. From ten startups, one will be successful. And what's happened with the nine nine other startups that are dying? This is a really, a really sad story, and I, I believe for professional training of entrepreneurs and this mindset, it's really important to speak about the not success stories, because there is a, a guy in uh, in internet in the social media. It's a really important Gary V about uh, promoting the entrepreneurs, and he's speaking about his friends suiciding because they cannot give back to the VCs the the money that they they raised. I mean, the smoke always is there because it's trendy. I mean, uh, there is so many VCs, they're raising money easy, I'm going to. And there is always people that uh, try to get uh, over smoke uh, uh, investment. And if we're not speaking about these cases, we're making that uh, this fashion is addictive. That there will be people that uh, their professional training is not enough, their criteria for, for analysis is not enough, that they can decide to enter in this game. And in the end, it's gambling. Uh, VCs are a gamble over the projects. They really don't understand the technology. They really don't. Und uh, I mean, I'm gonna argue <laughs> here. Okay. <laughs> no, no. I, I'm speaking about the general investors. I think we're know. speaking about different sectors. Yes, yes, yes. Well, because uh, 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 no, which links obviously the kind of investors in in in. No, we need I mean, to know about the science. But no, I was spoken with. Uh, I mean, about sectors like artificial intelligence, for example. I mean, these uh, new sectors that are rising in uh, six months. Yeah, you you're know? talking about the VCs that you know have the huge amount of money, the Koshlas, etc. I put five million here, five no, million there. No, for example, there. artificial intelligence this year is uh, the fashion trend. The last year, a lot of uh, big uh, corporates, the IBM, the Intel, everybody was buying startups. I mean, startups so uh, in seed, mm -hmm. uh, accelerating them with arti some artificial intelligence software inside in a lot of verticals. So what we are expecting in the next two to three years to have these products on the market. I, I mean, uh, I for, uh, for example, in my case, we are using all these events of entrepreneurships about uh, rounds and stuff to understand, to make market, market analysis, where will be the next big thing. And you can see what is the big corporates in their accelerators problems buying and you know that these companies will try to use it, this technology in the market in the next uh, two to three years mm -hmm. because the cycle is this I mean they buying in the three four years the company and in seven years they should be ready for the market so, but when I spoke with investors on uh, four years for now about this technology what they are base uh, their criteria to understand the technology itself uh, you can see that they cannot be experts in everything, you know. I mean, in health, it's not typical, mm -hmm. especially in genomics and stuff. Mm -hmm. A pharma, it's something mm -hmm. uh, different from itself because mm -hmm. it's really complex. But the other sectors, uh, you know, uh, the business angel, for example, they are emotional people. Yeah, true. They, 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 they they're they're totally yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, they're totally investing by, by emotions. They understand something or relate something with a familiar or friendly case and stuff <coughs> without really entering deeper. So this means that everything about ideas like smoke can be rice. It's not uh, true that it's so difficult. It's up to personal skills to raise money. But later, you need to, to execute. And that is where everything is going down. And we see the crisis in the United States the last six months in, the, in January. Uh, all the VCs are devaluating their evaluations for the second round. 
in, in the, the market in this moment in the United States is closed for second rounds <coughs> because they have this huge heating on the first first rounds of the startups. So maybe this will lead to the last question. Um, cause we cannot keep discussing. Yeah, oh. <laughs> but later, after the elevator pitches, if you want, <laughs> we can discuss more. Um, a startup company is created in Barcelona, it's a one, it's a. So, do you think that we are living a startup bubble? Not in the manufacturing industry. <laughs> it's only in the maybe uh, tech sector or uh, yeah. bio, but uh, in depends. the manufacturing industry, there is a real oh, yeah. lack of creation. I, it's yeah. very different when you have technology. In or not technology. I mean, there's a lot, and I, I have my office at the Pier 1, right, which is right next to, to the Museo de Historia, where there's a huge community of entrepreneurs, but most of them dealing with e-commerce, right, the deliveries, the globos, all this kind of stuff. These kind of companies, there's one each day. It's true, and, and, and I think it's a good thing that they people have, you know, the initiative to start their own companies because the world, you know, in the, f the near future, you will have to employ yourself most likely instead of having a sure. your job for uh, someone to pay for it for 20 years. So I think this is a sign of dyna dynamism and it's something that gives you some training and then you will start the next one and, and you will maybe have some jobs, etc. So I think this is a good sign. Mm, in our case, I wish we had as many companies, not as many, but I just would like to add uh, one thing saying what we were discussing before about the percentage of companies that die, you know, and maybe in this world where this, this you know, effervescentia, that there's a high death ratio. Mm -hmm. Not that there's not a death ratio in science, but science is not that binary, right? So if science is good, it doesn't really die. You can reposition it, you can maybe look for, an, maybe you won't make, you know, 10 eggs or you will get, you know, the result of your life. But um, there are other possibilities. If there's a good science background and a good patent, it's not that easy that, that this completely dies, right? You might not get a huge investment, but maybe you get an agreement someone can acquire. So there's, there's different options out there, so don't get disappointed. I think the, the fact is to continue. So I mean, I agree with the most. I think it's good actually to to if you have one. I mean, I didn't know if we have one uh, spin-off uh, being created every day. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. We should it's multiply by three, three or four. Startup yeah. company. But uh, startup companies, yeah. But. Um, but at the end, I mean, it's. I mean, I don't. I don't see that from at least from our sector because that would mean that we we should have a lot of investors around, and we don't have. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we don't have is because they say, well, there is not enough deal flow, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, so that's what we should increase actually. Then, if to, to your question whether it's a bubble or not, um, uh, well, I mean, having more startups is good actually. It's always good. I, I don't see any any reason. I mean, investor would take care. Of, uh, I think. Uh, of their LPs uh, monies and uh, coming back also to the previous uh, discussion uh, I mean investors usually don't invest by themselves I mean, <coughs> usually they invest the, you know with other two three investors so there are more people looking at a project I mean no one is invest just themselves because they're crazy they walk out one day saying oh I, I you know I got this vision uh, in US there are some few of them and they're really good actually mm -hmm. so they can do that um, so uh, so I think when we talk about bubbles, at least in the biotech sector, startups or whatever, is mostly related not to the number but to the value of mm -hmm. the of the companies. And and again, I don't think here actually uh, we are on that uh, that space. I mean, usually valuations in in Spain are lower for the same technology than elsewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think uh, so we should have even more. Mm. Uh, no, I wanted maybe to insist a little bit more that uh, the kind of industry that we are addressing this center, and well, we are talking in general, but uh, the center and the material science is more in the manufacturing industry, which is much more conservative than what you are explaining here. So we don't have uh, certainly a bubble <laughs> of <a> spin <laughs> in this sector, but it's the opposite. And I would say that uh, maybe we should also uh, make a geographical reference about uh, how we compare to Europe as well, mm -hmm. because it's clear that the US has a dynamic you can have a Tesla, you can have a lot of things that uh, you have never seen in Europe. And I would say that um, you need to take into account that uh, in Europe, the spirit, as you said, is probably is different. So there is not such a movement. 
but there is a strong difference in the manufacturing industry in Europe. So Europe is maybe an anomaly in the world, it's less, but the Germany is less anomaly, let's say, than the Spain. Okay, that's for sure. And uh, let's say that I have been in something similar to this discussion in some places in Germany, and uh, <laughs> most of you have been there. And of course, the, the references are completely different than what we are discussing here. You have uh, here uh, behind you a lot of uh, nice companies that are uh, really prepared to discuss with you how to transfer your knowledge and to share uh, with an open uh, uh, way uh, the things. And uh, here, this is very difficult. And so I would say that uh, the, 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 the decision of uh, playing uh, in Europe for us is a key point. I say it's clear that what we are doing can only be done in the, at least the European uh, scenario. And uh, sometimes you are lucky enough to, let's say, pull a company, a small company here to the European scenery with a, a significant part of the whole <coughs> business that you are playing. And this will be, I would say, already a success so from a research center. If you are able to say, okay, I'm participating in an European project together with two companies that now are able to, so it's already quite a successful history from our side, okay? And uh, I guess that this is something that can be really done and uh, you need a spirit as well in the institute to do that because you really need to decide that, okay, I will spend time with uh, collaborating with the industry. And this means less papers, less uh, higher rank uh, papers, but uh, if you are in a project where you need to bring the technology to this level from three to five, I tell you that you will spend a lot of time playing with uh, engineering people, with uh, industry people, and unless you do that, you will never succeed. And I think that it should enter in the spirit of the or institutes as well to do that. So ERC is very good. We are very happy, you are yeah, free, yeah. but then after the ERC there is something else. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the manufacturing industry this is, in my opinion, essential. And it's not a fast process. That's right. It's a long process as well. And yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to add something, yeah. we just want one, to one word. I mean, in Catalonia, I mean, my observation principally are over Barcelona as a startup community. I have been fo involved in this startup community since 2005. So I, I saw before the, the big uh, fashion trend and after, and I can uh, unfortunately say that we are after. There will be no uh, bubble. <laughs> and now uh, the, the, investment, uh, the investment, investment way in startups in Catalonia are changing. It's going more to employment model than uh, traditional funding model as American one. We are uh, nowadays the events in this year mostly are weekends that it's a uh, venture builder. It's the new player that we have uh, in, in the ecosystem that are employing the, the entrepreneurs. So this is totally different, uh, different uh, p point to address the, the creation of uh, enterprises, S uh, minimizing. They, they say that maybe minimizing the risk and uh, uh, aumenting the, the success of the project. So with this, I don't believe that we will enter in a bubble. Maybe because of the amount of money that we, are, we have in the market in Catalonia, that I can speak about Barcelona, that is not so huge how it's in the United States and they are going through their bubbles there. Mm -hmm. uh, for them, it's typical, but uh, I mean, we, we saw their bubble this year, yeah. they, they really have bubble there, but here not, and will not be because of culture. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> Is anyone, does anyone have a question? Um, the something something you want to discuss? We have time, like yeah. 10 minutes. Nothing? You have experts in TT, CEOs, <laughs> venture capitalists here, <laughs> <laughs> directors, so thank you. Well, or any group leader. <laughs> it's also a possibility. There is no, I, I have just one yep. quick one. So you know, I mean, the, uh, you mentioned about Europe and the new model for investment. You mentioned ERC, so Europe is pushing now for EIC, you know, so the European Innovation Council. So how do you see, uh, you not have all of you have to answer, but just yes, maybe, how do you see this model of investment? Because that's uh, from, it's going to be evaluated by innovators, uh, but it's going to be given to uh, 
research institutions which are not yet uh, uh, sort of like shaped to, to, to tackle that challenge, I assume. So how do you see that? Is it going to be a waste of money? Or have, or you no? seen, have you seen any information? I, so I don't have any information no. of how the tools are going to be. I just know that Europe is completely rethinking so it's some of the tools. So also the role of the EIB. I was talking to the EIB, for instance, mm -hmm. because it's not just how you fund research, but how you mm, incentivate more venture capitalists right. in, in, in specific areas or other type of... So I know they are rethinking this, especially in the Brexit kind of atmosphere because a lot of the investment from EIB were in London and now they are rethinking you know which clusters are kind of like relevant in which areas and how they could deploy part of their funding to to help that okay. so I, I was the other day actually meeting with someone from the European Union committee and they're I mean they are not saying too much on, on how it's gonna be I mean it's gonna happen but they you know they're being cautious on, on how this is going to be harmonized through all the countries and so on. Uh, we do, I mean, what we do know is how the European Investment Fund works, uh, which is very similar to any BC. Yeah. Which I would, I would, I mean, this would be it would have been nicer to to have a bit more flexibility, let's say, in terms of investment, but it's not the case. So, <coughs> in terms of, uh, it would be nice to <coughs> see uh, finally um, more information on the innovation. Uh, at the innovation programs. Yeah, you, can yeah, you have some. Like yeah, definitely. It will be good. Uh, if I can share my insights, I mean, it's insights in the in the corridors. Uh, what I know in this moment is that there are cities around Europe that are preparing themselves for this new paradigm, creating uh, work, um, these co-working places between universities, trying to get all the uh, all the ecosystem uh, in a networking mode try to, to build these relationships to be prepared and what they have as a base to create these uh, new new models for funding will be based on Horizon 2020 that we have experienced in this moment as this follow-up strategy that we need to when you finish the project of Horizon 2020 you should explain your follow-up how this will be replicated so as I understand uh, the insight is going in this direction that uh, this strategy to the moment we explain about replication of the results will be the base of the projects. Uh, it's uh, quite, uh, it will be quite similar uh, to the WIFE program, for example, that is demonstration of technology. Uh, I mean, uh, they will try to see more demonstration and more usage and more citizens involved in the projects than uh, really laboratory e experiments. The experiment should go on the street. And we saw, for example, outside from, from the enterprise that in this moment in the university we have quite enough of a mass of research that uh, it's uh, on top to be on the laboratory. Need to continue the research, need to be adjusted, but need to be on the society, the, the real end user. No? So this is my insights. It's a rumor still, but they are really in this direction that you make the replication models to be the model itself. Thank you, Katarina. Well, thank you all thank uh, you. to be here. It has been a great discussion, I think. Another opportunity to have a question? No? Okay. Don't be Thanks. shy. No. Don't be shy. <laughs>